Time to give the old, I don't want to make this video line, but in reality, I do want to make it. I've previously stated that I would not make this video unless my Sanford pony did anything else regarding this situation, either towards me or in general. After thinking about it some more, I feel like I have a moral obligation to actually fill people in due to the amount of confusion, lies, and overall insanity that is being spread by the terminally online. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, welcome, first of all, allow me to fill you in. Around 2020, I believe, I became associated with a YouTuber who some of you may know as Misanthro Pony. I never really considered us to be friends though, something he would gladly tell you otherwise. In reality, we rarely ever talked about stuff and our only interactions were occasional and extremely brief Discord DMs where he was always the one to begin, me hearting some of his comments on my videos, and brief Twitter interactions. The reason I became associated with this person to begin with is because, even before I started getting bigger on YouTube, I had watched a few of his videos before and we had some of the same opinions on the state of modern entertainment. Stuff like Modern Star Wars Bad or Last of Us 2 Bad. However, the way we approached these things were incredibly different and I'll get back to that. It wasn't until I started watching more of Anthro's content as we became associated that I started to see some cracks. For one, Anthro gets angry in his videos quite a lot. Forgive the psychotic bitch who brutally killed Joel in front of you, bit off your fingers, and threatened to slit the throat of your pregnant girlfriend? What double standard backwards bullshit is that? I don't care if he called you the C word, just take the damn sandwiches. And if this was a character he was playing simply for emphasis or comedy akin to someone like AVGN, Nostalgia Critic, M M Moeller, it would be fine, but it's not. Or at least he does an absolutely horrendous job of separating his video persona from how he interacts with others. Anfro gets pissed with people, and it wasn't until I started doing some digging that I realized just how unhinged this guy was towards other people, including people that I know and are mutuals with. If you chip Anfro's shoulder either by disagreeing with him or getting in a silly argument about Star Wars, regardless of how civil you are, he will rip you to fucking shreds. And I don't mean it's people making a big deal about someone on the internet hurting their feelings, I mean he will literally track other people's accounts down on completely different platforms to the ones he's arguing on, just to angrily insult them and write massive paragraphs of him ranting about whatever he's annoyed with as well as identity politics for some reason, which leads into our approach to making content. While yes, we hold a lot of the same opinions on the quality of entertainment, Anfro gets really passionately angry about identity politics and SJWs, treating every situation, even videos where he is apologizing to people, as an opportunity to start bitching about it. There's a reason why these days I tend to distance myself from the anti-SJW and culture war crowd, and it's specifically due to people like Misanthro demonstrating how pointless and exhausting these arguments are. There's also taking into account that he wasn't much better on my Discord server. Anfro would regularly fill up the movie channel with never-ending, anger-fueled rants about identity politics using every profanity under the sun, and would sometimes even go as far as to grab a singular tweet that had pissed him off that day and start shit-talking whatever point it was making, as well as the person who tweeted it, which filled the chat of unnecessary drama that he simply couldn't keep to himself. It got so bad that my mods had to personally tell him to shut the fuck up, and it was one of the main reasons why I eventually booted him out of the server entirely. What finally brought me to the point of taking action was when I found out that Anvro had previously gone after someone I mutuals with by following them over to their DeviantArt account and leaving a bunch of nasty shit. On top of him also commenting on one of their videos, which was months old by the way, just to shit talk them. It was all of this and this situation specifically that finally convinced me to cut ties with him. So I was going to march into his DMs, tell him that his behaviour is unacceptable and I do not like it, hopefully leave on equal terms, never see him again. And this is where the issues begin. For those of you who don't know, I have very bad problems when it comes to anxiety and stress. As someone on the autism spectrum too, I've had people over the years get aggressive with me when I was younger and shouting at me for either not getting social cues or not picking up on something as fast as other kids. When people get mad and shouty like that, it acts as a trigger for my anxiety and I begin to have a panic attack. I frequently have panic attacks actually, even as I'm writing this video due to the nature of it. So when you combine that with the fact that I am planning on going into some guy's DMs who does not take kindly to people's negative views of him, and when he's someone who gets incredibly angry and shouty at others, you can probably paint a picture of my mental state at the time. Sorry if it sounds like I'm being a pussy, but I'm only 17. In fact, I was 16 at the time, about to enter the DMs of a 28-year-old man who gets livid at other people over Star Wars. And given everything I had learned about him at the time, I feel confident in saying that this man fucking terrified me. And I was absolutely terrified of what his response to me saying, hey, I think what you've been doing online is awful and I don't want to associate with you anymore, would be. So instead of risking having a mental breakdown combined with everything that had happened in regards to him, I blocked him on all of my social media and booted him off of my Discord, given that he had previously been stirring 
throwing shit in there and now I finally had an excuse and I didn't offer him an explanation because I didn't think he deserved one and also mainly because I was terrified of him. Now could I have approached this situation a lot more calmly if my anxiety wasn't going through the roof? Probably. Should I have actually gone his DMs and talked to him? Probably. There are a lot of things I regret doing in this situation, but at the end of the day, he was pushing the boundaries of my own comfort and had gone after my mutuals, as well as causing drama in my Discord server. I was 16, he was a fully grown adult, I did not feel comfortable. I blocked him. If someone on the internet blocks you, you are not owed an explanation. If you're arguing with someone and they block you out of nowhere, that's different. But I shadow dropped this guy without causing a scene for the sake of my own comfort and to block him out of my life. I do not personally see this as an unreasonable thing to do given his past actions. It was a private, I repeat, private, discreet cutting of ties that no one besides people close to me knew about when they checked in to see if I was okay, and misanthropony. No one besides me and misanthropony and like three of my friends knew about the blocking. Now at this point you may be thinking, okay so map, God, he needs to work on the acronym, it's just endless fuel for people that don't like him. Map is a bit of an asshole and he triggers your anxiety. Not the end of the world and I understand what you did. At least in an ideal world, that's probably what you think. But the title reads Blackmailer, Manipulator, and Snake for a reason. Because things are about to get so, so, so much worse. And it is the most baffling act of reputation assassination I have ever seen in my entire life. No exaggeration. On January the 25th of this year, I put up a thread on Twitter about Misanthropony. And if you know nothing about what transpired in order for me to make this thread, or think that nothing Anthro could possibly do could make him any worse, buckle up. Because Misanthropony, nearly a full year after I blocked him, with both of us never saying anything publicly and moving on with our lives, used a sock account on Twitter in order to blackmail me with slander. The events go like this. Around midnight on January 25th, or the 24th if you're weird, I received a reply from an account I I had never seen before under a random tweet I had made, asking if they could DM me and that they wanted to keep things private. Now I get reasonably skeptical when someone I have never heard of before asks to DM me. I have my DMs turned off for a reason, so I decided to do a little bit of digging on this account. What I found is that this account was created in June 2020. It was following no one and had no followers. But that's not what set me off. What set me off is that 90% of this guy's replies to people was him religiously defending misanthropony from seemingly anyone that uttered his name. Using the exact same vernacular and words that Anthro uses in his unhinged rants and giving off the exact same angry energy. Choosing to insult people and be generally aggressive. On behalf of Misanthro Pony. Okay, so what if he's just a really devoted defender? No. What really convinced me this was Anthro was that this account randomly dips in and out of activity over the course of several months. It was like the account was being randomly logged in and out of by someone who wanted to defend Miss Anthro. It's as if they logged into that account specifically to act as a bouncer for Miss Anthro's many critics while trying not to give away their identity. Since they were anonymous, this could have simply been my own conspiracy theory based on a number of coincidences, like how this account was coincidentally made around the exact same time Anthro started receiving a lot more criticism than he was used to because of his Last of Us 2 video. But you have to admit that a random account with no followers, whose only reply history is defending Misanthropony using his exact same vocabulary, who also has their account randomly logged into when they need to attack someone for criticizing Anthro, seems outrageously suspicious. But the moment the penny dropped was when, in response to me asking what the account wanted since I assumed they wanted to talk about Misanthropony, they said this. From what I heard, you're the douche that cut him off while he was being harassed. Whatever game Anthro was trying to play with me fell to pieces as he said this, because no one besides me and Anthro knew about me blocking him nearly a year prior. And what also helped me understand that this was Anthro was because Anthro takes things insanely personally. He no doubt saw me cutting ties with him because of his behaviour as a betrayal, when we were never really friends, trying to frame it as if I had fallen for the tricks of his hate-dom, because Anthro admittedly has a massive hate-dom, some for justified reasons, others not so much. But as we've previously stated, this has nothing to do with his hate-dom. It has everything to do with his actions towards people I know, his reactions to criticism, his actions in my Discord server, and his obsession with culture war bullshit that makes him disturbingly angry in his videos and in general conversation. And Anita Sarkeesian would never forgive a man who acts mean to a woman. And you know what? Fuck the idea that Ellie having a flashback of Joel would stop her from wanting to kill Abby. The Star Wars sequel trilogy was more consistent than you. He is a 28-year-old man, and now this 
28-year-old man is attempting to shame me, a 17-year-old, for an action I made for my own comfort and sanity at the age of 16, and lying about him coming to me for help in his time of need when I can assure you we never had such a conversation. We may have talked about him getting hate before, but the fact that he interprets my company as me protecting him in his time of need when he never asked me for help directly is just fucking sad. You are a fucking adult map. Why are you suggesting that you ever came to a minor for personal help when that one, never happened, and two, when your real friends are right there, ready to listen and talk to you in your time of need? But we're gonna get back to that shortly. Now we come to his brilliant deflection that, oh guys, it's not Misanthropony behind this account, I'm just a messenger. Despite him knowing things that only Misanthropony would have knowledge of, maybe it was possible that he hired some goon to come harass me and told them about it, which would make things a lot worse by the way if that was the case, but no. He instead tries to offer proof that it isn't him by sending me a tweet where I had previously talked about him, as if to say, oh, I know all this insanely personal shit between you and this guy because you insulted this guy before. This logic, by the way, would fly in court with the majesty of a rock. However, this tweet mentions nothing about our situation or the fact that we've blocked each other. In fact, what's hilarious about this is that the tweet he sent was when I was publicly defending him against people who were obsessively talking about him. Why would you use this as a dunk against me? What the hell is this logic? And then then, after he does this, the account then decides to threaten me with having my reputation be ruined for the lies that have been made up by him. I'm telling you this because Misanthro is currently working on a video responding to his haters and harassers. If you didn't want to end up on that video, I suggest you talk to him. For those of you who don't know, Map has been slowly teetering off into being a massive lol cow by making multiple videos completely ass blasting people who make videos about him. Some not even having over 1000 subs, and also announcing that he's making a big gigantic video going into detail about every person who's ever wronged him. In light of recent events, I've been working on this video making a full length response to my hate dumb. This is incredibly childish, and it's this unhinged behavior that got us here in the first place. Given all the info I have, the dates of the account's activity, the vocabulary used, the fact that this account always defends Anthro, the fact that it knows things that only Anthro would have knowledge of, and the fact that it is now blackmailing me with this slander to talk to Anthro, there was no doubt in my mind that it was blindingly obvious that it was Anthro behind this account. Something that he himself would later admit, by the way. Anthro hopped on an alternate account, decided to change up the way he speaks to me specifically to present himself as a lot calmer compared to his previous tweets on that account, just so he could talk to me with out suspicion, reveals that he knows things only he himself would know, and then tries to convince me that this isn't him behind the account, only to then shoot himself in the foot by publicly blackmailing me with false information that he is willing to publish in a video about his haters, taunting me by saying that I should talk to him if I didn't want to be punished for betraying him, or he meanwhile refuses to unblock me after I unblocked him, so I have no way of actually talking to him, making what he said on Twitter an open threat that he fully intended on following up with, all the while still pretending to be someone else. Not even M. Night Shyamalan could come up with such a stupid plot twist. As a result of all of this, I started freaking out. As previously mentioned, terrible anxiety issues. This sent me into a panic attack. The fact that a 28 year old man was so bitter about me blocking him that he was willing to drag me through the mud with lies while openly taunting me by giving me no way of contacting him to smooth things over was bizarre. It's unbearably sad for an adult to do this and it's also absolutely diabolical that he thought he could get away with it. Say that he does publish this video. It would be ridiculously easy for me to debunk the heck out of it given everything I have on him, as well as my conversation with his alt. It would also be easy for me to make a Twitter thread calling him out for all of this, which I did by the way. It seems silly for me to panic with this context, but issues like anxiety need time for me to assess the situation after a shock like this. Which is why after talking to some friends, I made the decision to publish this thread and it received a lot of support. I asked my good friend Blair TV to go and message Anthro about what was going on since they still had contact with him. Him. Anthro, in response, decided to directly lie to Blair's face about the account, claiming it wasn't him. Blair then took to messaging the account in question, who did a horrendously poor job of hiding that he was Anthro. Blair gets in DMs of Anthro again, where he is visibly freaking out now that he didn't get away with it because of this meddling kid, and then tries to convince Blair, who I am very good friends with, that I am spreading misinformation about him and making false accusations, claiming that he was never going to bring me up in a video in the first place, which is 
a very interesting backpedal from his persistent threats. Blair is going to have a section in a second, deep diving into the context of their DMs and the manipulation tactics map used on both me and her, so stay tuned. Now realizing that no one believes him, Anfrudlen has an absolutely fucking embarrassing argument with the fake account and himself for damage control, with all the subtlety of DON'T, don't shoot, SHOOT, I'M, I'm innocent, INNOCENT BRO, and all it does is confirm that he has access to both accounts and can log into both of them in order to stage a fake argument he had had between himself. And if you were somehow still doubting that this guy was Map, well, this is where Leo Convoy comes in. Leo is a personal friend of Anfro and has helped him get a lot of his haters off his back who were taking things too far. He gets a lot of shit for helping Anfro a lot and honestly he doesn't really deserve it. But upon reading my thread he noticed something that he elaborates on in his live stream covering the situation. The vernacular that Map used for his argument with me specifically was his. Anfro had copied his friend's way of talking, using words like son, being far less aggressive than usual, just so he could try and convince me that it wasn't him behind the account. Which was basically him essentially throwing his friend under the bus if someone were to try and connect the dots and match up the way the account was talking with Leo. With this in mind, as well as everything else contained within that thread that Anfro had done that night, Leo was understandably pissed off to the moon and back. Now what I'm about to say is taken straight from Leo's live stream talking about the situation, so if you need to verify everything you're and I suggest you watch that for context. Keep in mind that Leo is a personal friend of Anfro's and has gone out on a limb to defend him hundreds of times in the past. Leo hopped into a call Anfro was on in Leo's Discord server and openly confronted him about this thread, giving him a single chance to admit if it was him right there. And as a shock to absolutely no one, he audibly admitted it was him. And if you need further of confirmation as well as visual proof, he also admitted it to Blair in DMs, while also being a pedantic little shit. Now, I don't know what went down in that call, but from what I can infer, it wasn't pretty. And I mean, Leo has every right to be as pissed as he was. Anfro gets in controversy after controversy for his behaviour online, and Leo constantly sticks his neck out for him against the people who take their hatred of Anfro to an extreme level. There have been people that have used Map's disgraced reputation as a way to push false pedophile allegations because of his horrendous acronym, and there have also been people who have sent him death threats, horrific images, constantly gossiping about him, etc. There's being very critical of the guy, and then just taking it to an extreme, and that's the kind of stuff that Leo has stuck his neck out for Anfro in order to clean up. So imagine doing all this stuff for a friend, attracting all these horrible people so that you can fight them yourself and get them off his back, because he hasn't really done anything worse than saying mean shit over the internet. Still really poor behaviour coming from someone with anger management problems, but he hasn't stooped any lower than that. And then you receive news that your friend hopped on an alt account, started using your way of talking to mask that's him, in order to gaslight and threaten a 17 year old and broad daylight just because they blocked him a year prior. All of his time spent trying to defend Anfro and his reputation, and then he suddenly gives everyone who hates him the ammunition needed to feel justified in their actions, while also giving level-headed people completely justifiable reasons for hating his guts. Just imagine that for a second. Leo gets very angry during this stream when describing what he said to Anfro, and I don't blame him for any of it. Anfro's actions that night were absolutely repulsive, and confirmed every worry I had about him in my mind that led to me cutting contact with him in the first place. It was also through this call that it was revealed Anfro had lied about not being on the spectrum, meaning a lot of his anger issues and hyperfixation on stupid shit could be rooted in autism or ADHD. But is that an excuse? Hell no. Before this stream began, by the way, and the morning after the disaster that happened due to Anfro's actions, Leo gave me a call on Discord in the morning to check up on me and to confirm some stuff, and told me that he had told Anfro to never mention me in a video or any capacity at all. And I hop into Manga Comments server and I DM him, like, hey, can you talk? I go on and I explain what I thought to be true. I believed 100% Misanthropony had autism and that he just was not diagnosed because that's what he told me. He had never been tested. Never been tested. But I also told him I will be dealing with this and he is not going to mess with you again. As those were my wishes at the time, I wanted what had happened to remain on Twitter and for Anfro to actually take time off and to never contact or speak about me ever again. Leo also told me that he would be speaking with Anfro rationally to try and figure things out. A few hours after this call, after being told by a close friend to not talk about me again after what had happened, Guess what he did? He brought the situation to his fucking YouTube channel, uploading a short apology video that I specifically stated I did not want, and directly going against the set of instructions that Leo had gave him. In this video, he publicly admits that he was behind the account. After a while, something started to bother me. 
this feeling of unresolved conflict with Cartoonchi, but this just felt different from other people whose ties have been cut with me. Unlike the others, I still had some respect for the guy. I know it's a stretch, that I'm being this friendly with someone that I don't actually know personally. All I really know about him is the conversations we had on Twitter or Discord, but I really did value the talks that we had. There was a part of me that wanted to talk to him, straighten things out, try to end our relationship on a better note. There was just one problem. He still had me blocked on all of his platforms. So I tried talking to him using an alternate Twitter account. I asked about DMing him because I wanted the conversation to be private. But he said he was suspicious of me since he noticed that my only other activity on this account was speaking against people who had freuding excuses for trying to demonize me. And this is where things get nasty. Instead of simply telling him it was me, I was pretending to be another person. I mentioned information on my upcoming hate dumb video. It looked like I was thinking about featuring him in it. So if any of you were still doubtful, there's your smoking gun. He was guilty. However, this apology is very, very bad. And I say apology video very loosely. The video itself is a sickening display of a 30 year old man whining like a little pussy after he got caught being a manipulator, choosing to instead dreadfully downplay what he had done. I was doing it because I thought there was no other way to start a conversation between me and Cartoonchi because I wanted that closure. I really just wanted to talk to him, and I tried to keep this up the best I could. Trying to be lenient, trying to sound non-threatening to Cartoonchi and Blair, but it didn't last long. Looking back, I really should have seen this coming. Outright lying about why I cut contact with him when I explained to him multiple times when I was arguing against his alt precisely what my problem was. He blocked me on all platforms and kicked me out of his Discord server when I didn't do anything to break its rules. But he never reached out to me to explain why. It ended up being the usual nonsense that my hatem likes to get butthurt over very easily. Being rightfully angry with corporate mongloids that repeatedly insulted people's intelligence and just wanted them to eat their garbage in exchange for their money and calling out idiots on Twitter, DeviantArt, or elsewhere when they say something stupid. And also choosing to call me pathetic for cutting him off in the first place and, most insultingly of all, trying to frame the situation as if I had sided with his hate them or disagreed with him by for some reason specifying that I cut contact with him after his video on The Last Jedi? Fucking what? Then, a few days after my re-review of The Last Jedi, he blocked me on all platforms and kicked me out of his Discord server when I didn't do anything to break its rules. But he never reached out to me to explain why, and it turned out that his reason for doing it was just petty. How difficult is it for you to keep your culture war, anti-SJW, identity politics, hate for Star Wars, and modern entertainment as bitching out of a fucking situation for once, you tool? It was so painfully clear that he only mentioned me cutting contact after his last Jedi video as a manipulation tactic to try and prove that I sided with his hate them over Star Wars, completely choosing to ignore the reasons why I cut contact with him that he is fully aware of to try and drag me through the mud with him and to get me to face some form of consequence for daring to call him out on his bullshit. As evidenced by the many people who blindly agreed with him without knowing anything about the situation, because he not only left out heaping amounts of context, he also lied like a desperate motherfucker so that his impressionable audience didn't turn on him after realizing what a scumbag he is. Now I'd love to get into the specifics of Matt's manipulation manipulation tactics and rip the apology apart myself, but Blair did it way better than I possibly could manage. So sit back, because Blair is not only about to delve deep into their DMs with Map regarding the situation, but they are also going to dive deep into his apology video. Take it away. Hello, I'm Blair TV. Welcome to my office. Yes, I have an office now. Things have changed a lot recently. If you don't know, I used to look and sound like this. Yes, the boss lady's giving you time off to do this. She also sends kind words to Toonshi. Why, that's great. Come, come, take a tour with me and I'll tell you about this wacky pony drama that's been bucking my dear friend Cartoonshi for quite a while. I know you want to get to the juicy stuff, but we gotta catch you up first. Since the release of my Steven Universe video, MAP, God, that acronym is so unfortunate, I'll call him Pony, and I had in frequent interactions, but didn't officially start talking until the release of his video on The Last Jedi, where we had a few conversations about crazy people on Twitter. As Toonchi has likely mentioned, this was exactly the same as the instances where he vented about Twitter drama on his server. I personally was fine with it. One week later, however, Pony had told me that Cartoonchi had inexplicably both blocked him and removed him from his server. I immediately went to Toonchi for answers and got them quite quickly, but Toonchi's explained it in more detail. Knowing that Pony was such a supposedly unpredictable individual, 
worried me, and given Toonji's specification that the cutting off was to be silent, I decided not to tell Pony and just say that I didn't know. I asked her if it was possible to talk to Cartoon She because I really wanted to know what was going on. She went to ask him what was going on, and she came back to me saying that he doesn't want to talk about it. It was really clear that Cartoon She wanted time to himself, and I was willing to respect that. And that was the status quo for about nine and a half months. Both parties' names would come up in DMs, I'd learn more unsavory things about Pony, like his incredibly harsh treatment of someone who just disagreed with his takes on Steven Universe and The Last Jedi, and occasionally Pony would ask me about a comment that Toonchi had made in regards to him, to which I had to play dumb because if I spoke, it was going to end in a shit show. And a shit show it was. Twas the night of January 24th, 2022, and I get a DM from Cartoonchi. He told me that he believed he was being contacted by a sock puppet account owned by Pony. As Toonchi has no doubt demonstrated, this account's only activity was defending Pony. Toonchi has discussed several examples, but the worst one was in our DMs, where he extensively pats the account on the back for epically owning that Claude Crimson Mayhem. It's an account that echoes his exact beliefs that he quite likes that coincidentally only made that reply five minutes prior to him telling me it's really pathetic. Again, Pony and I were on good terms, so I ask him about the sock account and send him all of the screenshots. Pony, of course, denies it. I've always had my major qualms and criticisms with how he conducts himself, whether it be his views of media critique or his habit of borderline harassing people he disagrees with. I've always been incredibly lenient when calling him out because as Toonchi said, he's really unpredictable. At the same time though, there was a part of me that wanted to believe him. Despite my qualms with him, I didn't think he would actually do something that shitty and stupid. So while I made my suspicions less prevalent to him, I was almost certain. But I had my guard down because I was genuinely anticipating being wrong. Regardless, Pony and I had a bit of a back and forth. Pony told me he wanted to talk to Cartoonchi. So that plan was being set up while I did further investigating and confronting a Pony. With seemingly no answers from Pony, I decided to confront the account directly. One thing that I didn't notice that I should have noticed was that the account's incredibly blunt demeanor had grown more soft as soon as he was confronted. It wasn't too out of the ordinary, it's something I do, but stacking that on top of every other discrepancy makes everything all the more suspicious. I asked the account several questions and Pony the same questions in an attempt to pin them down. Eventually, the account was going to say something that only Pony would know and everything was going to crumble. However, the questions were not good enough and with enough careful planning, one can easily wiggle out of them. The account had a very fuzzy memory of Pony venting about Cartoonchi on a server, and Pony had a much more vivid memory of that fact. The two differing perspectives can easily throw someone off who is intentionally looking for the same perspectives. And yes, I should have joined the server, really stupid on my part, but I wasn't in full gear because I didn't want to go too far and piss him off. While this whole debacle is transpiring, Cartoonchi tells me he's writing up a thread on the recent developments. Stakes were higher. I didn't want to risk Cartoonchi spreading any possibly false info on another creator, of course. However, all signs pointed to the alt being ponies. Its speech patterns, its history, everything. So Tunchi released a thread to overwhelming amounts of support. Following this, Pony began to get a bit erratic. He began accusing Cartoonchi of spreading lies about him and refused to talk to him unless he deleted the thread. He also started talking to the account in order to get him to butt out of the drama. For me, it was quite convincing. So the Mexican standoff continued despite the fact that Cartoonchi had fired the first shot. At the end of that standoff, Pony sent me this message. <clears throat> Toonchi always praised me for my impression of the guy, so here we go. I read through Toonchi's replies and he said he was scared of me. I I never meant to scare him in any capacity, and I have to be lenient with him because I know he's a minor. I want him to know I'm sorry if he ever thought I was going to scream at him or anything like that, because I was never going to yell in his face about it. By that point, I was just fucking done, so I decided to cool off. But then, 30 minutes later, Pony wanted to tell me something, but he asked me to promise not to get mad at him for it, which might I say is quite the tall order considering what the message was. That account, it was me, because Toon had me blocked on all accounts. I had no other way of getting in touch with him. I wasn't trying to antagonize him or anything. I just wanted a way to let him know that I wanted to talk with him. In spite of everything, there's a part of me that does want closure with him. It's gonna be in the back of my head until I get it out. You pissed me off. So with this added context, let's rewind this. Pony said in his apology that he only did this because he wanted to talk to Cartoonji and end on a better note. There was a part of me that wanted to talk to him, straighten things out, try to end our relationship on a better note. There was just one problem. 
he still had me blocked on all of his platforms. So I tried talking to him using an alternate Twitter account. I asked about DMing him because I wanted the conversation to be private. But Tunchi said didn't want to do that. Well, you should respect his wishes, he is a kid after all, so maybe either admit it to you or leave it alone. No. He continues, let's hear how Pony himself describes what he did afterward. Instead of simply telling him it was me, I was pretending to be another person. I talked to him about everything that happened, cutting ties with me, how he did this almost immediately after I tried to ask him for help, dealing with people making false accounts on Twitter trying to steal my identity, and why he didn't just try to explain why. No, that didn't happen at all. You replied five times to that one tweet. In one of those replies, you do do that, but the four others take a different approach. This reply right here attempts to guilt him for dropping Pony, referring to the act as unforgivable because he abandoned his friend in a time of need. Now these words could come up in any normal confrontation of this matter. The problem is that the intention is for it to seem like this is coming from a third party. So this isn't supposed to be you spilling your guts in an honest fashion to him, this is supposed to be a random account trying to tell him how badly he hurt Pony. What was his goal here again? I wasn't trying to cause him any harm. I was just trying to open him up to the prospect of trying to talk with me about what happened. But the method in which I tried to get him to do this was terrible. You can say that again! This is guilting him into speaking with you. This is a manipulation tactic, but we're not done. After yet more guilting, Cartoonchi elaborates on his reasoning and explicitly states that Pony scares him. Now this would be a good time to lay off of him. Toonchi's a kid and he shared his boundaries and what makes him uncomfortable. And considering how blunt you're being to the guy, maybe you should just lay off, admit it was you, and apologize. Oh no. Instead he decides to shame Cartoonchi for having those boundaries. Great. If you're really that scared by someone using mean words on Twitter, then you live a sheltered life. Dude, it's not unreasonable to not want to be friends with someone who's constantly angry. That's actually a common boundary for most people. But the most damning thing he did lies right here. I'm telling you this because Miss Anthro is currently working on a video responding to his haters and harassers. If you don't want to end up on that video, I suggest you talk to him. Now this sounds like a threat, right? If you don't talk to me, I'm going to put you in my exposed video. But let's give Pony the benefit of the doubt. What does he say on the matter when I ask him? He says he had no intention of putting Cartoonchi in the video and he was just speaking as an outsider who just thought he would be in the video and you fucked it up. Right there, buddy. Let's rewind your apology video and hear what your motivation for doing this was. I talked to him about everything that happened, cutting ties with me, how he did this almost immediately after I tried to ask him for help, dealing with people making false accounts on Twitter trying to steal my identity, and why he didn't just try to explain why. I wasn't trying to cause him any harm, I was just trying to open him up to the prospect of trying to talk with me about what happened. But the method in which I tried to get him to do this was terrible. I mentioned information on my upcoming hate dumb video. It looked like I was thinking about featuring him in it. Now before I say anything else I want to make something very clear. I was never planning on making Cartoon Shea a subject in that video. He didn't do anything to me to deserve it. It's about the people who participated in my online harassment. People who spread lies and false information about me while delving into their hypocrisy. Neither of which cartoon she is guilty of. Did you catch that? I wouldn't blame you if you didn't, considering it's not even there. The hate dumb video has absolutely nothing to do with your conflict with cartoon she. Hell, you make an effort to differentiate him from the other people you've cut ties with. So why is it being mentioned? Why? I mentioned information on my upcoming hate dumb video. Why, Pony? Why? Another question. Why aren't you being specific here? You say that you mention the hate dumb video, and then you explain why it's unreasonable to come to the conclusion that he would be in it. But if you were to actually show the message and explain what you said, you can't say that the assumption is unreasonable because Cartoonchi is currently under the impression that the account is you. And you. Not some outsider. He knows it's you. And you know he knows it's you because just one minute prior, you outright deny that the account is yours when he presses you for it. So you know that he knows that it's you. So what does Pony do? Let's stack it all on top of each other. He tried to guilt Cartoon G into talking, he tried to shame Cartoon G into talking. The hate dumb video bears no relevance to the situation so it can only be brought up in this fashion as a means to intimidate. What does Pony do? Well, he says, if you don't want to end up on this video, 
you will talk to Pony. There's no salvaging this. The video bore no relevance. You can still act as an outsider and not bring it up. And if it weren't a deliberate move, there would be no reason to skip past it while apologizing. This was brought up intentionally to scare him. One of the last things she said to me was how cartoon she was panicking because he thought he was going to be in that video. And even though I made it clear I wasn't going to do that, I just felt horrible when finding out that he was panicking. I was never trying to scare him or antagonize him in any way. And I am so, so sorry that that happened. Then why did you mention the <sighs> And I tried to keep this up the best I could. Trying to be lenient, trying to sound non-threatening to Cartoon She and Blair. Yeah, I feel so non-threatened by that message, Pony. Thank you. But wait, we're still not done. While our DMs are impossible to recover, the screenshots I took show the once blunt, angry, and rude account becoming much more soft and innocent. This was yet another tactic to attempt to throw me off his scent. But the worst thing he did was attempt to play on my emotions. I don't know, man. I'm really nervous right now. Look, if you're actually real, I'm incredibly incredibly sorry that I'm causing you stress. He told me I was making him nervous. I don't like causing people stress, and occasionally I have issues in conflict. Combine this with a couple other issues I have as well, and that's kind of a weakness for me. Although I don't think he was aware of that fact, it was. Regardless, he still played all my emotions in an attempt to get me to back off of the sock account. But it gets worse. When Cartoonchi posted that thread, Pony tried to convince me that Toonchi was making false accusations, that he was spreading lies about him. He was trying to pit me against him in this situation. Here's something to know about Cartoonchi. Cartoonchi. Cartoonchi's one of my best friends, I've known him for almost two years, and I can talk for quite a while about how highly I think of him. He's someone I value tremendously, and so to try to convince me that he's spreading lies about you, when you know we're playing a game of telephone, when you know that I'd message Toonchi about this, you were trying to pit me against one of my best friends just so you can cover up what a shitty person you are. Jesus, that's pretty fucking low. You don't care about anything except keeping your image squeaky clean, and you'll attempt to keep it clean no matter no matter what effect it has on others, and luckily, I am all too familiar with this behavior, and when I see it with a bird's eye view, I am very much able to call it out. Thankfully, Pony admitted that what he did to me was shitty at least. Blair TV, I really am sorry. I am sorry that I manipulated you and abused your trust. But even still, I get his cultish fans giving me shit for making him look bad. But buddy, this isn't my fault here. And Pony, listen, I'm sorry I had to leak DMs, even though you detailed what happened to them in your apology. But if you do shit like that to me, I'm gonna have to air you out. Also, I don't want you to think I secretly hated you the whole time we spoke. I enjoyed talking to you. You did ask if I at some point did enjoy talking to you, and I answered honestly. I just had major issues with how you conducted yourself. So my advice to you you would be to get out of this culture war bullshit. I know modern Hollywood sucks ass, but you can't get mad at people just because they enjoy something, even if it is contributing to more bad content. It's their tastes. It isn't harming anyone. Leave people alone. Yes, I know people make bad defenses of things. I know that more than anyone. But you need to approach people in a respectful manner. Continuing with shit like this is only going to further damage your reputation. You need to self-reflect on a lot of shit. Well, I think I've gotten my point across. Sorry for taking up so much of your time. Since I'm here, click that epic subscribe button for some of my old content when I was still figuring out my channel's vibe. We're being strictly original in the future, and if you like how I grilled Pony, there's more grilling just around the corner. But for now, I'm going back to work. See ya! Map has managed to successfully downplay this situation so much that his audience are just interpreting it as dumb Twitter drama, as if he got cancelled for making a bad joke. And it's really cool, it's really, really cool having an adult, an adult male who still lives with his fucking mother, who has no job of his own other than thriving off of internet controversy, openly try and defame you when you're not even an adult yourself over a decision you made when you were 16 that was a direct result of your anxiety and personal triggers. It's it's really, really cool to have a nearly 30 year old man openly and publicly call your anxiety filled reasons for cutting his toxic ass out of your life as petty, while being completely aware of your issues because you had already told him. Unsurprisingly, an hour after Avro uploaded this piece of shit, he took it down. Not many people know it exists, although it has been re-uploaded. This is because I immediately went to Leo after Map uploaded it, telling him that he had just completely disregarded his instructions and my own wishes. Leo was not happy. Only for me to look at Twitter later in the day to see he has tried to put up some mealy-mouthed 
apology video right after I told him do not talk about him and do not put him in your videos. How is it you're so woefully incapable of following basic directions? I said do not put Cartoon She in a video and you did the exact opposite. I'm going to have words with you tonight, not pleasant ones. Pull that video down now. He then forced Map to take it down. Then Map uploads another apology shortly after. I don't know what was said in this one since I only got a quarter of the way through it before running to Leo again, but I've been told by Blair that it's quite bad. At this point, it was clear that there needed to be some form of intervention since Map was clearly having some form of a breakdown and was not listening to reason. And, uh, well, I'll let Leo describe what happened. I wound up hitting up Cartoon Sheet and he sent me a tweet. Uh, tweeted Misanthropony saying, I made the video going into the full details and properly explaining what happened. I'm sorry I didn't do that the first time because Cartoon She reacted negatively. Rightfully so. He says, I really wish to make things right. I only have you to believe me. So I screen capped it, sent it to Map, and said, Stop! Do not upload that! And then I had to get a hold of Emily. Tell her, Hey, this idiot's not listening to me. Grab him. The only thing left on Anthro's channel to suggest that something happened is this community post, specifying that he's going to be taking time off. No one has heard from him since, but I can assure you he is still alive. Obviously, after Map uploaded part 2 of that apology, Leo created a live stream documenting everything that went down and spreading awareness. But I feel it's necessary for more people to know, given how many people were confused about Map suddenly bringing a situation on a different platform over to his YouTube channel when he was told not to. There have been some videos covering the situation from smaller creators, and honestly, fair play. They're mostly decent coverage of what happened, but I feel it's best to hear about it straight from the guy who was directly involved with this. This happened back in January, and I stated that I would not speak about it publicly unless Map tried anything stupid. But over time, I felt some form of duty to give people my side in a much more detailed fashion than a Twitter thread, and to let people on YouTube know as there is still a lot of confusion, even if it does count on me going back on my word. And like hell am I letting Anthro's intermittent apologies warp public perception of me and the situation at large. I apologize if this video is unstructured, but it really hurts me to make it. This year has not been good for me so far. I've had two of my former friends be exposed for some horrendous shit, and then the situation with Misanthro where one of my former associates decided to try and gaslight and threaten me about something that happened a year ago has made my already existent trust issues a lot worse. I'm an extremely paranoid person when it comes to connections and social situations, and this just did not help. And to Anthro, since I know for a fact that you are watching this right now, I don't want your apology. I refuse to accept it. You had two tries already to come clean about what happened and it's resulted in you torching your already ruined reputation. If you feel the urge to make a video, don't. If you make any of the previous mistakes you made, try to sugarcoat what you did, downplay what you did, downplaying my anxiety, lying about me in the situation. If you try any of that, I will respond publicly. I don't forgive you, and I probably never will. Keep your head down, and keep making your usual content. The backlash will die down eventually, so you don't have to worry about getting your videos bombed each time you upload, but no one is going to forget what you did. Stay in your lane. If you want to make an apology, apologize to the audience that you willingly lied and manipulated. With that being said, I've been Cartoonshi, and uh, I'm just, I'm just so tired.